All right, here we are at the Drupa Show in the Sakurai display. This is going to be a videotaped uh, walkthrough and demonstration of the new Sakurai 580C. As you can see, we're getting started on the make ready there now. So, from an infeed standpoint, Sakurai's always used a skid load style feeder. Excellent feed head, very, very versatile, very few adjustments needed to go all the way from onion skin up to 24 point board. We use full automatic setup for the feeder head, for the side guides, for the, uh, for the uh, side lays, and all the other positions here, along with impression cylinders, um, and then the chain delivery, of course. So, you notice that we use air tapes on the feed board. They're controllable here so that you can alter the, uh, alter the volume of air. We are using an ultrasonic double detector in addition to the traditional mechanical detector that uses the multiple folded pieces of uh, stock. On Sakurai presses, you are able to alter the in-feed timing while the press is running. There's a dial right there that we'll try and focus in on a little bit. There are certainly other presses on the market that use that electronically, but A, we don't need to do it very often, and B, that's just a very reliable um, system. It's also very good to be making those adjustments while you watch the feeder work, and having to press buttons at a console never did really make much sense to me. So, The fit and finish of the Sakurai has always been impeccable, but I think this press is really the nicest looking one that they've developed. You'll notice that we use chrome on the handles versus the painted surface. Now the 580 centimeters equates to about 31 inches in the United States, and um, that size can uh, provide a bit of extra room, especially for gang run printers and folks that do multiple up, and also for packaging. At 24, at 24 point board, we do handle packaging quite nicely. So this is a good picture of the Sakurai automation. You'll notice that, uh, that Paul, our crack press operator, has already moved on to the next print unit, while the unit before is finishing its own uh, its own plate mounting. So all Paul's gonna need to do is guide this plate off. And you'll see there's a slight pause there for him to gather himself, and then here comes the plate. And this plate would certainly be reusable, although in most cases it's going into the recycling. Um, you notice that the bend of the tail of a Sakurai plate is very, very slight. We do not require a plate bend at all. You're gonna take a completely straight plate. Drop it down over the pins, as you can see. Whoop. And once that mounting has happened, here comes a roller. Uh, holds the plate in place, brings the plate around, and then tucks in the tail. That's the reason that we don't require a bend on the tail like a number of the other presses on the market. Now, from an automation standpoint, um, full ink roller wash, of course full blanket wash, and we also have an optional impression cylinder wash attachment available depending on what a customer's requirements are. Now, Sakurai presses have always utilized a double impression and double transfer cylinder design, and we transfer the sheet at the 7 o'clock transfer position, which simply means that the entire sheet of paper is released from the blanket and impression pinch from the unit before before it becomes transferred. The reason this is important is to avoid shock mark and other kinds of slapping, especially on heavier stocks. So over the last roughly four minutes, we've seen the uh, four plates for this particular run go on the press. Now Paul is going to uh, move down into the, uh, into the last unit. Now your first run today, you printed with units one, two, three, four. And now we've moved ahead. Five and coat. Five and coat. Gotcha. Now, in this case, there is no plate on the cylinder. However, the press does cycle through as if there was one. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. That just keeps everything in time and makes sure that you don't have any kind of uh, plate changer uh, interruptions. And it doesn't take very long at all to accomplish that. Now maybe while Paul is finishing mounting that plate, I'll talk a little bit about our coder. We utilize a Harrison Bruno coder that is fully automatic. It's what they call a chain. I'm going to try and get in here and see if we can get some sort of a close-up. The chambered system allows for very, very easy operation and very, very consistent coding control. So if we move up above, oh, beautiful. As soon as that gate comes down, Paul's going to open this gate up for me. 
you can't have two gates open at once for safety reasons. So, very good, thank you. So the chamber design allows for a minimum amount of coating that's required to print your job. Very, very high level of uh, consistency throughout the run. And the other nice thing about the Harrison Bruno system is that it's a fully automatic wash up. So literally in four to five minutes without any operator involvement, we're gonna wash up the whole unit. Thank you. Now I'm just gonna step back a bit. Sakurai's always had a full seven to eight foot extension on every coder press that we sell. What this allows us to do is to actually spread out the IR drying system. And the reason we wanna spread that out is so that we don't have to blast that sheet with quite the same um, volume of air and heat that you see in presses that have a shorter delivery. We also continue to stick with the traditional release of the wet paper off of the coating um, roller or the coating cylinder at the lower position, dry it, and then rise. Notice that a number of the other machines on the market actually lift the wet sheet up and then dry it. Never have understood that because moving that wet sheet up the gooseneck is really one of your hardest uh, hardest things to do. Very neat fit and uh, and 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 uh, let's call it buttoning on this machine. Touch touch uh, buttons there for your quick wets. Over here, control for air blow fans that sort of thing. Very streamlined delivery with very handsome legs. So as Paul prepares for his first pull, I'd like to take a focus here and then we're also going to step over towards the console. Now, Zachary's always had a fully integrated console system. We utilize closed loop uh, spectrophotometry using the uh, X-ray IntelliTrack system as you see here. Here's the control panel. We also uh, are able to do things like uh, sheet size um, changeover, compression cylinder changeover, a lot of other monitoring of the press from the color console. Very, very reliable technology here also, I would say. So, this falls first full. Looks like we've got a, uh, what is that, a Ferrari or a Maserati that we're, uh, that we're printing? No, it's a Noble. It's an Opal? A Noble. <laughs> British sports car. It's a beautiful print shop. Absolutely brilliant. So, so Paul's making a couple of slight register moves using the console. Just by way of detailing this, we have up and down, side to side, and skew all on the fly. So in the event that a plate was imaged a little bit crooked or by any chance went on the press a little bit crooked, not hard at all to make those kind of corrections as you can see Paul attending to here. Now this press of course features SIP3. So the file data can be sent directly from the pre-press and allow for uh, pre-setting of ink keys all the way across the board. Um, this machine is, is literally brand new, probably, you know, second time it's been printed since the factory. So the SIP3 has not been fully integrated yet, but uh, we are using the technology. It's just not as uh, refined, let's say, as it would be after several weeks of operation. So I'm just going to take a quick peek in the back here. Using a graphic dryer and then the, uh, the litho coat coating unit that comes from Harrison Bruno. The other thing that folks really like about the Sakurai presses is just how neat the entire fitment of the machine is. You literally have these three cabinets here, two for the dryer and one for the coater. In the back there behind the paper, there's a refrigerated um, dampening system. That's it. Everything else on the entire press, electronics, are all housed beneath the catwalks and it makes for a very neat, compact fit in your shop. This is the graphics um, Digitronic powder spray unit, which is standard equipment. We're gonna step over and see uh, the scan being done. So you'll notice that once Paul touches that button twice, a vacuum engages to hold the sheet down. And then the scanner is gonna scan right across the sheet. Literally, as quickly as that, here comes the display. And it looks like the SIP3 is not working too bad, my friend. You've got one red zone out of out of what is that? Uh, 
probably 80 in key openings. So yeah. darn good. Close darn good. Loop now. So now we're so going to use the closed loop. loop. Go ahead, Paul. And you will see the adjustment take place across there. So you'll have before and after figures. Oh, there we go. Brilliant. So, as Paul was describing, the observed readings from the X-ray are sent seamlessly through the console to the individual ink keys on the Sakurai, and then it even displays the before and after settings so that you can easily track that. Let me step back out of Paul's way. Would you say you're printing for money at this point, my friend? <laughs> it looks like you are to me. I sure would like to. Yep. So. Well, excellent. Well, I think that really does wrap up our video. Um, I think as you've observed here in about six to eight minutes, we've done a complete four color make ready uh, up to color. I'm just gonna step back and kind of get the long shot of the press here to close. I'd like to thank you all for listening to our video demonstration. And if you have any questions, you can call us at Grafco 800-458-2769.